Shalom, giving our honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh We say, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Bashem Kodash and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who has taught us this truth, how to teach this truth um, through the power and grace of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We say, um, Peace and shalom to you. Like, hope you're in good spirits. Shalom to you. As it is written. As it is written. Confession is made unto salvation. As it is written. Let's get to it. This is Romans. Chapter 10, we'll start at the first verse. It says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, for Israel is, that they may be saved, that they might be saved. It says, for I, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. So true. Even the ones who know the Israelites, the two-thirds may know of the Most High, His heavenly, His heavenly Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world called Jesus, but they don't understand according to knowledge. And this is what we need to get. We need to get and gain the understanding of the scriptures, not just read them, but to understand them. To understand the will of the Most High Yahweh and what his son brought to the earth to do for you. They don't understand this according to knowledge. It says, for they being ignorant, ignorant means not to know, of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, whatever they feel is best, leaning unto their own understanding. This is what two-thirds have done of the nation of Israel, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the ones who know the so-called circumcision. To establish their own righteousness. And what the main problem is. What the main problem is. I've been in this crew for 10 years now. Gone on 10 years. And what I've seen. Is order. The problem. Number one. Is order. Brothers don't know how to fall in order. And to fall in line. The number one problem is order. So when you establish your own righteousness, you want to do your own thing. You want to count number one starting with you instead of the man that's in front of you being counted before you. You never want to humble yourself and put yourself behind another man. You want to be number one out front. And those willful type spirits is going to be shot down. Because it's not in order of Yahweh Hashem Shai. When you were called to be number one, then you'd be number one. If you were called to be number 30, then you're number 30. You can't make yourself number one by leaning on to your own understanding. This is what it says is being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. And going his righteousness is in order. He's you 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 preach that he's perfect balance. What does that mean? That means he has an order. He has what he needs it to be, not what you deemed it to be. It says, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness or the order of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Following the Lord's statutes and commandments is righteousness. Following his will, who the men he set up is righteousness. That's his righteousness, not your own. You have no righteousness. Remember, filthy rags. 
If your rags is filthy, you can't be number. You can't be shining. You're not out front. You filthy. So get in order. Get in line. Humble yourself. The problem number one is order. It says for Yahweh Shai is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man that doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, saying not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Yahweh Shai down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Yahweh Shai again from the dead. You can't do this. You wasn't given this authority. What it says, verse 8 says, but what saith it? The word is near thee, right? Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahweh Shai, and shalt believe in thy heart, Salakia, that shall believe in thy heart. For with the heart, with the heart, uh, I'm sorry, it says, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that Yahweh have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the this is the first order. Comes from Yahweh Shai. Remember, Yahweh raised up Yahweh Shai, not you. You must fall in line. Confess. When you confess, right? Con with and fess or fatari means to admit, say, and to speak. Tell. You telling of the order, not your own. This is not yours. This is not your doings. This is not your ministry. This is your Haobashim Shah's ministry. Fall in line, get in order as he set it up, and tell and confess. This is all you need to do. You see what other men do when, when they weigh with doctrines, fall, break up, fall on their face. People confess to your doings behind closed doors. All of this is not in the order of your how about Shema Shai. You must recognize these things. Your way with doctrines, your unbelief. This is what happens when you don't fall in order. Confession is made unto salvation. Isaiah 28. And 16. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord power, Behold, I lay... In Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. This is the beginning. This is number one. Who is this speaking about? That stone, that tried stone is Yahweh Shai. So everyone is behind him in line. It says, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste, Right? Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteous to the plummet and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding places. Everything you do in secret, lies that you've told according to this ministry on brothers, on this word, what it is and what it ain't. Is going to get drowned. It says water here. This time it's going to be nuclear fire. Straight like that. It says, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. Your lies. Your trickeries. Your, your waywardness. Your pride. All that's going to get flooded. It says, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through that overscurring pass, 
that over sorry, that overflowing scourge, pestilence, safety, disease warfare, concentration camps, mark of the beast, all these things that you went against, lied upon. It's going to come against you. It says, then you shall be trodden down by it, your lies. Everything's going to come on top of your head like a, a falling brick wall. And we already know about the story of, of, of uh, IUIC currently with his, uh, uh, with his untempered mortared wall. It's all going to crumble. Everything that you've done. Everything that you've said is going to come to pass. Everything you've said and done, you're going to uh, uh, is going to be accounted for. Throwing men off, teaching wayward doctrines, lying to the congregation. Isaiah 49 and 23. It says. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai. For they shall not be ashamed that wait upon me. Because black people, so-called black people, don't like standing in lines. But they've been in lines all their lives. Every life that they had coming back in the reincarnation, standing and waiting on some type of line, waiting for handouts because the curses is upon you. It says, shall be the prey be taken from the mighty and the lawful captive delivered. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee and I will save thy children. Who is this talking about? The elect. The ones who are listening. The ones that didn't crumble with their wayward doctrines and their lies and their pride and their falsehoods. Being willful. It says, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. This is part of this is part of the reward that you will receive. Because your confession was made to your salvation. Remember, with you saying, with you telling, with your speech, that speech must be 100% truth according to Yahweh Bashim Shah's words. It's not what you made up. It's not what you think of. Not what you thought of. Not what you think it may be. It's thus saith the Lord. As it is written, it says, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as the sweet wine and all flesh shall know that I am the Lord. I, the Lord, am the savior and redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. That's the elect, the mighty ones of Jacob, the elect of the nation of Israel, so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. This is your reward when you stand in line and get in line and do and say what you're supposed to say and do. Zephaniah 3 and verse 8. It says, therefore, wait upon me, saith the Lord. When you wait and you, you, you're on line, but which line are you on? Until the day that I rise up to, to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations the nations of Israel, Judah, all the way down to Issachar. It says, For my determination is to gather the nation that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them in my indignation. The nations, Salakia, the nations here, it says, For my determination is to gather the nations, that's the other nations, not the nation of Israel, that they may, this, this is what the Lord's indignation is, those that wait upon him, Salakia. And it says that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out my anger, my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. 
those who waited patiently. For then will I turn unto the turn to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Oneness. Achad. To Israel. Back in Romans, the 10th chapter, and the 12th verse, it says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. In order to call upon him, you must be given a name. The name was given to Israel, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekwakadash. That Greek is a Helen. When you look up, when you look up the Greek Helen. When you look up Greek in the Greek, according to the scriptures, if it do it. If not, you have to look it up yourself because it says Helen. And this is a Greek speaking Jew who practice their customs like the Greeks. This is what it means. Salaki is not coming in because of the building I'm in. Right? It says, For whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord was only given to Israel. Only Israel could be saved. It says, well, how then can they call upon them? How, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? This is how you heard. But if you saying something wayward, prideful, you're going to lead those men, women, the same way you are, prideful wayward and not having a whole hundred percent to teach other people and it goes on and on and on this is why the greek philosophies when you learn about the greek philosophy those was israelites making up stories of superheroes and supermen demigods half man half god going around the earth conquering that's all fictitious all made up but because they couldn't see this in a spirit, they, they wrote these things out and told these stories carnally. And people latched on to these things, these wayward doctrines. And they became Hellenized because of the Greeks. The Greeks made them this way. When you, when you read Antiochus' Epiphanes in Maccabees, the first chapter, you look up first Maccabees, the first chapter, and it tells you, of how Antiochus had made all people Greeks and they followed, meaning the Israelites, followed his religion. When you follow another man's religion, another man's power in God, because there's only one God, and that's Yahweh. There's only one power, and that's Yahweh, the God of Israel. These other nations have their own gods. When you follow them, you become like them. Because you turn away from your worship and follow another man's worship. So you become Hellenized or, or become a Greek. Like Timothy's father. Timothy's father was an Israelite. Timothy was an Israelite. Not a so-called white man. Isaiah 5. No, Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, 4, it says, Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt be, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Talking about the whole nation of Israel, and especially the elect. All these, all of the sins of your youth is going to be the sins of your youth is going to be wiped away. According to Yah by Shimei was shy. These are the ones who slate gets wiped clean. It says, "For thy maker is thy husband, right? 
the Lord of the hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the power of the whole earth shall be, shall he be called. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, have called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Those are the ones who who patiently waiting online in order. Because you grieving in spirit. Ezekiel 9 and 4. It says, And a wife of youth, when that when thou wast refused, saith the Lord, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, on thee saith the Lord thy Redeemer. In a little wrath he hid his face. Right? Even though we went on cargo slave ships and we went from captivity to captivity, this was a little wrath because he could have wiped the whole nation out and started over. He said, but he has mercy because of what his oath that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 sons, that he will be the power of Israel. So there's no need to feel ashamed or be confounded. Right? Isaiah 54, it says, um, it says, uh, this word uh, confound, right? When you look up that word confound, can okay, look it up. Salakim, Salakiakim. Confound. I'm look it up on this computer right here that I have. Real quick. Happens when you don't have service in the building. When you look up the word confound in the in the um, Miriam dictionary, Miriam Webster dictionary, it says uh, uh, to bring to ruin, destroy. So it says here, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shall thou be destroyed, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou for thou shalt forget the shame of the youth of what you've done in the past, right? And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood widowhood anymore. What is widowhood? When you have no husband. Verse 5 says, For thy maker is thy husband. So he, 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 he divorced us and put us to shame. This is why, remember the story of Joseph when he didn't want to put Mary away because he would have shamed her. This is what it means by divorce. You, when you divorce and you put a person away, you're really shaming them. That woman can't ma marry again unless, unless that husband uh, uh, is dead. You get a bill of divorce, nobody going to want her. She's used uh, plowed land. Nobody wants to uh, go over someone else's plowed land. And this is what Israel became. He's going to publish salvation. Let's get this. Um, publish. Isaiah 52 and 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring up good, glad, good tidings, that publish peace, that bring up good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy power reigneth. How beautiful is that? When you look up this word publish, ah, again, salak your bros. When you look up that word publish, uh, publisheth, it's uh, H8085, Shammai. H8085, Shammai. 
When he published, it means what? To hear, to listen, to obey. To understand with consent. This is the same as confession. When you confess, you speak. You speak the truth. Well, you publish peace. You publish good tidings. You publish salvation. Is to speak those things. Shema. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one power, one Lord, Yahweh Hashem and Shai, and thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy mind. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. It's always there. That 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 understanding of the will of Yahweh Shemiah Shah being one one Lord is supposed to be ingrained in you, ingrained in your psyche, and teaching your children righteousness one hundred percent. Not according to your will, but as it is written. We give all praises to Yahweh Shemel Shah, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and shalom warm to the elect that's pushing out this word throughout the four corners of the globe for the edification of the house of Dawah Da. Hopefully, hopefully that this uh this epistle was uh, edifying. Um until next time, Shalom.